Hello, Timberwolves fans, and welcome once again to Timberwolves Explosion, where you show your true blue and join the explosion of Timberwolves basketball. And we are available, of course, on the sportsstuff.com and iTunes, and I thank each and every one of you once again for downloading and listening to this wonderful show. Now, as I said, we're available on the sportsstuff.com. On the front page, there is a button that says TSS Boards. Simply click on it. You will then be taken to the the thesportstuff.com boards. You'll either be prompted to sign in or sign up. If you have not signed up to the thesportstuff.com message boards, please do. It is 100% free and 100% fun. As you'll be able to interact with all of us podcasters and other members of the website, where you'll be able to talk pretty much just about anything. You'll you'll have uh, boards for... All of your favorite teams in the NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball, and National Football League, along with NASCAR and other sports, and even politics or whatever the heck you want, comedy, even uh, video games. There's a couple of video game shows here on thesportstuff.com, so do check that out. It is a great place to be. Now, I also want to mention really quick, TimberwolvesPress.com, TimberwolvesPress.com, wonderful website for your Timberwolves information, up to date as they break stories and uh, basically have a lot of in-depth Timberwolves coverage on there, and they're nice enough to mention me as well and the thesportsstuff.com, so please do check out TimberwolvesPress.com. Now, today, of course, is, as I didn't even mention earlier, <laughs> today is October 31st, Friday, October 31st, that would make it Halloween, so... Happy Halloween to all of you that are listening, and um, I apologize I did not get this show up sooner, as this show is the Northwest Division Preview. That's right, the Northwest Division Preview. I wanted to have this up either late last week or early this week, but busy schedules get in the way, so I apologize once again for that. So that is the main focus. Also, there has been a single Timberwolves game so far uh, against the Sacramento Kings in which the Wolves pulled it out. So we'll get into that also later today. Um, real quick, I'll mention that Timberwolves roster, of course, was finalized in releasing Blake Adhern, Chris Richard, and David Harrison, who never got to play a single game in the preseason for the Timberwolves as they thought that he was going to be a nice addition to the uh, the front court. Well, never played a single preseason game, and that's the end of it. So uh, the main surprise to me was the loss of Chris Richard. I'm very surprised to see him go, despite the fact, well, he didn't produce much in the preseason, averaging about three points and two rebounds. You know, not much to offer there. So what do you do? So I guess we just have to move on. Kelvin Booth, of course, a member of this team, surprisingly, Brian Cardinal, and uh, Jason Collins on the inactive list starting out the season. So that's the way things stand And uh, with that, we're going to take our first break, and we'll be right back after this announcement. Here on thesportstuff.com, get on board the Viking ship with Purple Mafia. We will talk about the new Purple People Eaters and the best running back in the NFL, Adrian Peterson. This team is ready to make a move forward. Purple Mafia is available on thesportstuff.com, along with iTunes and Mediafly. Simply download and listen to the most honest and passionate Vikings coverage. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, Episode 8, the Northwest Division Preview, for those, for a reminder for those of you that may be listening on your iPod. So um, there it is, episode number eight, Northwest Division Preview. Now, the commercial you just heard, Purple Mafia, that is my Minnesota Vikings podcast. Do check it out and listen to honest Viking coverage, as mentioned. Now, we are going to get into the Northwest Division. Now, first and foremost, last season, the Utah Jazz won the division with 54 wins. Denver Nuggets won the division as well, or not won the division, <laughs> finished second with 50 wins, I apologize. Uh, they claimed the eighth seed with 50 wins, 50 wins, Denver Nuggets. That is absolutely crazy, the eighth freaking seed. That just shows you how dangerous the Western Conference is as the Golden State Warriors, yeah, with 48 victories, missed the playoffs. That's pretty tough. That's why the Timberwolves ain't going to make the playoffs this year, folks. 
even if we somehow, some way win plus 40 plus games, which isn't going to happen, by the way. Portland Trailblazers finished 500 after, uh, just countless injuries got in the way with this team. Um, yeah, a, a good start, kind of finished soft. 41-41, Minnesota, 22 wins, 60 losses, and Oklahoma City with 20 wins and 62 losses. They were all known as the Seattle Supersonics last year. Re- remember them? Mm-hmm. They were supposed to get the second overall pick, ended up with the fourth with uh, Russell Westbrook. We'll get into that shortly as we're going to cover the teams in the order which they finished last year as we've been doing all season. That would mean the Utah Jazz, not one of my favorite teams in the league, who I am, by the way, picking to win the division again, unfortunately, because there's just, who else is going to win this division, you know? I, I can't see it. Do you really see the Portland Trail Blazers emerging that much? I mean, they got roasted by the L.A. Lakers the other day. Oh, and by the way, Greg Oden can't even get on the court without getting hurt. So here we go again. Greg Oden out two to four weeks with a foot injury. So, yeah, fun stuff. Now the Utah Jazz opening up the season with Jaron Collins, Matt Harpering, and Deron Williams unavailable. So Deron Williams, of course, not Starting out the season healthy, but, uh, yeah, Deron Williams, just what a star he is indeed. Um, no major additions or subtractions to this team. Mamet or Kerr is still a part of things. Uh, Carlos Boozer, of course, one of the main players, Deron Williams. They're kind of calling them the next Stockton Malone, uh, Deron Williams and, uh, Carlos Boozer. I'm not sure about that. Uh, Deron Williams is much more exciting than John Stockton. Uh, Carlos Boozer, the next Carl Malone, I don't think so. I really don't. Unfortunately, yeah, Deron Williams is out two to four weeks to open up the season, which may hamper the, uh, you know, the repeat of the division championship for this team. But, uh, man, first time in Deron Williams' career he's really missed any time is in his first three years. He played 80 games first year, 80 games the second year, and all 82 last year. So this guy has been a Iron Man until now. So that's quite unfortunate, uh, Man, amazing numbers last year for Deron Williams as uh, he's 18.8 points, 10.5 assists a game. That is just unbelievable. 50% from the field, which is unheard of from a point guard, about 40% from three-point range. And he also makes his free throws at 80%. That's pretty much doing his job when it comes to the free throws, as I don't know how anybody can stand a point guard that makes 70% or less from the free throw line. That's ridiculous. Um but, man, this Deron Williams guy, you, know, you just can't go wrong with him. A lot of people th- are still debating on who's better between him and Chris Paul, despite the fact Chris Paul was an MVP candidate last season. Um, so now let's quickly move over to Carlos Boozer. And, yeah, the next Carl Malone. No, <laughs> Well, he had pretty good numbers last year, and he's been a very big-time player over the years. 21.1 points a game. And about ten and a half rebounds. Uh, the guy gets it done. Field goal percentage fifty four percent, about fifty five. Yeah, I mean the guy obviously does get it done, but to me, he's just not the next Carl Malone because he's just not. Carl Malone is arguably the best power forward in the world, all time. Um, but of course, this guy slipped all the way to the second round in two thousand two, which is amazing. It just shows you what a great draft pick he truly was. Um, man, a lot of people saw him going a lot higher than that in that draft. Not really sure what happened there. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, definitely a franchise type of player, though I think Deron Williams is the franchise player for this club. Nice. The one major addition, well, not major, but nice addition by the Utah Jazz was veteran point guard Brevin Knight, who uh, me and Marcus the Forecaster are large fans of, uh, particularly with the Charlotte Bobcats and Cleveland Cavaliers over the years. He's had a nice season or nice career. Unfortunately, he is uh, – Already 33 years old, or about to be 33 years old next week or so. Um, so age is starting to creep up on him. Uh, his numbers declined a bit last year with the Clippers. I don't know why he went to the Clippers. I, I just don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, 4.6 4 points, 4.4 assists. So nothing much to go from there. But I do see him being a nice backup for Deron Williams. Um, you, you, you still can't go wrong despite the fact his numbers have declined the last few years. Andre Kurilenko and Mohamed Oker, fantastic players. Um, not doesn't really show up in the box score as much with Andre Kurilenko, though he sometimes is a really nice fantasy player. <laughs> At least he used to be. Um, yeah, he, he's a stat filler. 11 points, 4 assists, and 5 rebounds a game, including 
about one and a half blocks and steals a game. Used to be a better shot blocker. Uh, seems to have lost a little bit of that over the years. Used to average almost three blocks a game. Now he's down to about one and a half. So I guess it's one of those things. What do you do? And, of course, Mamet Oker, one of the great three-point shooters in the league, um, about 38%. For a big man, that's some nice stuff. He he adds that to his game. And, uh, yeah, this guy kind of pretty much came out of nowhere as well. Another second-round pick by the De- Detroit Pistons a few years back, 2001. This guy's carved out a fantastic career, and he's off to a good start this year. Um, yeah, 13 points, 10 rebounds in his first game. But uh, this guy does it all. He's a tough, tough center for the Utah Jazz, and uh, that's why this team is going to win the division. They pretty much have everything. Um, he's not necessarily the best defender, but he gets it done over, in other ways with his points and his rebounds and the fact he can shoot the, the lights out. Um, I love Mamet Okur, and so do so many other players. Even Matt Harpering is a nice, tough guy for this team. He was a huge addition years ago. His numbers, of course, have declined. Now he's down into single digits, about eight points a game. Um, unfortunately, he's out right now, a right ankle rehab. So... Not sure exactly when he's going to be playing. Not probably pretty soon. Uh, other than that, pretty much Ronnie Brewer is a starter at the shooting guard right now. Uh, his numbers have increased over the years. He's up to like 12 points a game last year. Not too bad. Uh, he used to be pretty much a role player that was get only about 12 minutes a game. But yeah, his production has moved up. That is good news for the Utah Jazz. Indeed, just a very deep team with youth and experience all around. you got to like their chances to win the division, though, of course. I can't, I don't really see them getting anywhere beyond the second round this year with just, just too much talent in this division. Um, so now we're going to move on to the hated Denver Nuggets, a team I do not like at all. One of the most, one of the biggest trash-talking teams in the league. Uh, just players I don't like. Allen Iverson, I think for years I've seen him as being a very selfish guy. Um Kenyon Martin is just a complete, you know, this guy is just nothing but trouble all all the time. Um, he's not necessarily bad off the court, like getting in trouble with the law or anything, but overall, he's just, he's always been overrated, considering he was a number one pick years ago. Um, to me, he's just the kind of guy, he's always making these crazy celebrations, thinking he's all all that, and he's so special every time he makes, like, one dunk on somebody, all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, look at me, I'm I'm hot stuff, you know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of Kenyon Martins at all. His numbers also kind of show you he's not that great. About 12 points, 6.5 rebounds a game in 71 games last year. I mean, 6.5 rebounds, come on. You're, you're, a, you're a power forward, Kenyon. you got to do more than that. He's, he's only averaged 7.2 rebounds for his career, so obviously an underachiever. Big time, considering he was taken number one overall. Allen Iverson's the franchise player, or at least kind of, because you do have Carmelo Anthony as well, who I also dislike very much. Um, yeah, Iverson over his career has been a ball hog, and uh, I don't think anybody truly can deny that. Though his assist numbers have gone up greatly the last few years, especially with the Nuggets, about seven and a half assists a game with Denver. Um, but I just don't see it. I don't see Allen Iverson and Carmelo Anthony ever really carrying this team to the next level, which would mean the second, third round, maybe even the NBA Finals. I just don't see that ever happening. Uh, Carmelo Anthony, of course, an explosive scorer, 25 points a game last year, down from about 29 the previous year when he was competing with Kobe Bryant for the scoring title. Um, I don't know. I just, I, Car- Carmelo Anthony, me, Car- excuse me, Carmelo Anthony to me is just not the kind of guy I see as like a, I don't know. He's just not the kind of guy I can see as a true 30 points a game type of player. I, I just, <laughs> I, I don't know how, I don't know how that's going to make sense other than I think his numbers are bloated over his career. I think he's just more of a ball hog and kind of a showman. That's all he really is. And, uh, this team is filled with them. Anthony Carter is their starting point guard, which, uh, of course, he is an unselfish player, but his talent is not really that great. I remember him with the Wolves years ago. He was the third-string point guard here. He did okay. I mean, that's all he does. He's going to get assists, and he's going to make some nice defensive play. You know, he's going to be a nice shutdown point guard, but that's pretty much it with his team. 
other than that, uh, no major additions to this team overall. Uh, Jawan Howard is on the team. I don't know. I'm surprised he's still playing, to be honest with you. Uh, Stephen Hunter was added last year. Didn't perform much. So, <laughs> yeah, I, not much of an addition to this team at all. So we're pretty much going to move on to the next team, the Denver Nuggets, to me. I think they missed the playoffs this year because there's just too much emerging talent in the Western Conference. So now we're going to move on to the Portland Trailblazers, who may be the team that will usurp Denver's playoff position. I wouldn't be surprised if that were to happen, though I'm not impressed with them coming into the season just yet. Uh, Greg Oden, as I mentioned earlier, out again. Greg Oden, out again, two to four weeks. Has Still has not scored his first point in the NBA, so that's frustrating for this Portland Trailblazers team, and as I mentioned, destroyed by the LA Lakers in the season opener. But i got to admit, this team is stacked beyond belief with talent. Um, it's just it's unbelievable. Lamarcus well, Aldrich is a fantastic forward center, center forward. I mean, they're filled with forward centers on this team. Yeah, he averaged 17 or almost 18 points a game last year. His rebounding number is not where you'd really want from a guy who's almost 7 feet tall, 7.6 rebounds. He'll block some shots, about one, uh, 1.2. So nothing amazing there, but the guy is at least filling his role. You know, I mean, he's at least filling a nice starting power forward role with this club. Uh, Rudy Fernandez looks really, really good. Off to a nice start this year. He's a rookie. 24th pick by the Phoenix Suns, so he was acquired in a trade at some point. I don't remember exactly when, but yeah, he was drafted by the Suns in 2007. His first game this year, 16 points, 4 rebounds. He's a starting point guard right now. Uh, they have a mess of point guards, a Steve Blake. And uh, Rudy Fernandez, as mentioned, and Jared Bayless. Um, actually, I- I'm wrong. Steve Blake started the previous game. I apologize. And uh, Steve Blake is a role player, though. He's gonna. He it looks like he'll start, but he'll have less minutes, pretty much, than uh, Rudy Fernandez. Yeah, and Jared Bayless. Let's not forget about him. He barely got the game in the season opener for him. Much to my fantasy team's chagrin. <laughs> yeah, only getting about 14 minutes a game. But I think Jared Bayless, in the long run, is going to be a star. I mean, I love his athleticism. He's got an overall game that I think is going to really, really carry this Portland Trailblazers with, with Brandon Roy, LaMarcus Aldrich, and Greg Oden. I mean, this team has a chance to be something special. Uh, even Sergio Rodriguez is pretty good, though he hasn't done much just yet. He looks like he has a chance to be something special in time. If not today, maybe next season. Brandon Roy, as mentioned, just an absolute star in the making. Uh, of course, the Timberwolves blew it, letting him go last year. He averaged 19 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds. Just what a season. Um, though he's, he's had the injury bug in his career. He's missed some games, 57 games of his first season, 74 last year. So he's going to miss games with, with injuries. He's had ankle problems here and there. Um, that's just the way that stands. Travis Outlaw is another talented guy. He was undrafted. Or no, I'm I'm wrong. He was drafted out of high school. I'm looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> Drafted way back in 2003, oh, man, time flies. Picked, of course, by the Blazers. Uh, yeah, his numbers just continue to increase. Um, yeah, 13 and a half points a game, about five rebounds last year. 18 points in his first game this year. He's the starting uh, small forward for this team. So, I mean, there's just so many guys that play similar positions, but, yeah, they kind of eventually get everything together. Um, they eventually have to put a lineup together somehow, and they did. Uh, Joel Pritzbilla is a guy who, man, <laughs> on some team out there, boy, they'd just, they'd just be dying to have him. The Wolves are dying to have a guy like Prisbilla, who's a shot blocker and rebounder. I mean, that's what the Wolves need at, at center, a shot blocker and rebounder. We don't need a guy who can score nine, ten points a game. I mean, we'll take five a game from Joel Prisbilla. That's pretty much about what he's going to do in his career. But, yeah, I mean, the guy's going to get – the guy with, with enough playing time will get two – Two and a half blocks a game. I mean, I really like the intangibles that Joel Prisvillo does bring. Of course, he was a member of the Golden Gophers for a short time before he got in a uh, dispute with then-coach Dan Munson and left the team for the NBA draft. Started out very slowly in his career, but eventually found a home in Portland. Though, of course, as I said, the playing time, not really much there. Rafe LaFrance, still a member of this team. He's also always hurt. Martel Webster, another talented player and another 
high school uh, draft pick before they changed things in this league. Um, yeah, Martell Webster. Just he, this guy with enough playing time will probably emerge as well. Um, sixth overall pick by the Blazers in 2005. Uh, I can't say his numbers actually are that great, but in 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 spurts, this guy has shown some serious talent. Though unfortunately, he's out eight to ten weeks with a stress fracture in his left foot. That is never good news. I mean, foot <laughs> any type of stress fracture in your foot that can that can take seasons sometimes to recover. So we wish. Marshall Webster, the best in that. Uh, overall, your Portland Trailblazers, I see them finishing second this year over Denver. I think Denver's going to be third. Portland's going to be second. Um, though, I'm not sure how much they're going to emerge because that L.A. Lakers game didn't look good. I mean, it just didn't look good for this Portland team. The Lakers just destroyed them. You think Portland's going to show a little more going on there? Um, I did say these teams would go in the order as to which they finished last year, but I'm going to save the Wolves for last. So let's go to the ugly, ugly city thunder. I mean, Oklahoma City Thunder with, mm, uh, I mean, the name is okay, though unfortunately, folks, the Minnesota Soccer Thunder, yeah, Minnesota Soccer Thunder play in the A-League. So it's like it's a cool name, but uh, with somebody like me who knows about the Minnesota Thunder, yeah, a minor league soccer team doesn't really catch on too well. And the logo, I have no idea, man. I have no idea. It's just, it's ba- you know what it looks like? The logo looks like something that you use as a Band-Aid when you don't have a name or a logo yet. That's what it looks like. I mean, OKC with a basketball and some lines behind it. That's that's all it is. I mean, can you please, you know, I mean, come on. I just can't do it. And, of course, I mentioned on the... Uh, Run and Gun Phoenix Suns preview of this division. <laughs> Do check it out, episode 54 for Run and Gun Phoenix Suns with Dave Ang, a great guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, the look on Damian Wilkins' face, a member of the Thunder, of course, uh, when they unveiled the logo and name, the look on his face was just that of depression. He was just like, man, I don't know, man. That pretty much was the look on his face. Um, yeah, there, I think that's what fans are going to be thinking about this team this year. Though, of course, it's a new start, and this team was really cool for the New Orleans Hornets when the Hornets needed a home for a short time. I mean, it was kind of like a college atmosphere, which is good stuff, as the fans are always in it, because sometimes the NBA fans are dead. I mean, I was a four-year season ticket holder with the Minnesota Timberwolves, and, and there were times I would just sit there thinking, man, these people are just, ugh. These people are pricks. I mean, they're only here just to be here. They're not. They don't give a damn about the team. They don't give a damn, and it's unfortunate. Um, as I understand, half the players don't give a damn either, like Troy Hudson and Sprewell, guys like that. But still, come on. You know, it's it's not fun when you're around people that are just chilling. You know, and they're not gonna. They're not even into the game at all. Now the Oklahoma City Thunder have some nice youth on this team. Uh, Russell Westbrook had a wonderful preseason. I like the, his prospects coming in, though he turns the ball over way too much going in. I mean, there were multiple games where he'd have more turnovers than assists. Like, he'd have five uh, assists, six turnovers. He had an eight-turnover game a few days ago. That's not good stuff. And I know you're going to tell me till you're blue in the face that uh, it's just the preseason and it doesn't matter. But that tells me he doesn't have good ball control just yet, and that's why... Earl Watson is the starting point guard right now. Not the most exciting move ever. I mean, the guy is 29 years old already, Earl Watson. He's been in the league a while. Um, his numbers aren't too bad or anything. He averaged about seven assists and 11 points last year, so it's not like he stinks. But, uh, I I mean, what, Russell Westbrook, this guy has a chance to be pretty good. As uh, He had some explosive games. He had a 28-point game, 22-point game coming in. Uh, John Lucas the third is a very small but... Fairly talented guy. He's the third string point guard on this team. Don't expect too much from him coming in, though. Uh, though he was buried on the Houston Rockets last year. They had about five point guards. So we'll see what happens there. Jeff Green, the uh, the number two star of the future for this team, <laughs> coming in, average, averaging um, fairly unexciting numbers last year. But what do you expect? He was just a rookie, about ten and a half points and five rebounds. Um Oh, this guy has a chance to be really nice. Uh, more polished offensively 
than Corey Brewer, but Corey Brewer is more athletic and defensive. So that's what I like about Corey Brewer over Jeff Green. So most people would say Jeff Green, yeah, the more polished player coming in. And I'd say that right now. Of course, Corey Brewer off to a good start with the Wolves. We'll get into that very shortly. Uh, Nick Collison is not a bad center for this team, though. Fairly undersized at only 6'9". And doesn't block shots, you know, only about .8 blocks a game. Though he's about a nine and a half, nine and a half guy, nine and a half points and rebounds each. So I like that. The Wolves don't have a player like that. Um, they're forced to start Al Jefferson at center still. So there you go. Kevin Durant, the rookie of the year last year with 20 points, five rebounds, or four and a half rebounds, two and a half assists. Uh, this guy. I'm not so sure I'm ready to call him a true franchise player just yet, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. I hope he's not going to be a bust, but mm, I'm not convinced this guy's going to be, a, you know, 25 to 30 points a game player, whereas most people would say he was. That's why he'd take a number two overall in the draft behind Greg Oden. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. Um, by the way, the Oklahoma City Thunder uniforms are boring as well. Um, the only thing good about this team are the colors. I think the colors are okay, but that's about it. Um, yeah, I mean, you have nice role players like Damien Wilkins. Chris Wilcox is okay, but he doesn't block shots either. Uh, Joe Smith, well, his days are behind him. I think he's just about done. Desmond Mason has been a bust. It looked like he was going to explode and become a great player, but he's a role player. About, about, he's going to average about nine and a half points and four rebounds. So that's all he is. He was, a, he was a nice dunker. Now I, I don't know anymore. Um, hard to believe Desmond Mason is already 30 years old. 30. Can you believe that? It seems like yesterday this guy was like a 20 year old coming into the league. So, uh, he was yet another one of those high school players that snuck into the draft. Um, or no, I guess he went to one year of college. My bad. So <laughs> it's kind of hard to keep up sometimes with all these guys. But, uh, yeah, I don't look for this team to do much this year. I think they're going to be the fourth or fifth place team in the division because I think the fifth and final team will finish fourth, the Timberwolves. I see a significant improvement with the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think they'll win 30 to 35 games this season. Uh, Kevin Love off to a nice start this year. Kevin Ollie, of course. In addition, one of the few additions, you know, that were, well, the only free agent addition, actually. Um, yeah, he's a nice third string point guard. He had to play a bit in the first game because Sebastian Telfair suspended the first three games of the season because of the loaded pistol incident along with driving without a license when he was a member of the Boston Celtics. As mentioned, also Jason Collins, Brian Cardinal, and Sebastian Telfer on the uh, inactive list, so that's how things are starting there with the Wolves. Kelvin Booth, I don't see much playing time out of him. Uh, of course, he was part of the Rodney Carney deal. I like this. I like Rodney Carney a lot, as him and Corey Brewer were the defensive stoppers in the season opener. I liked it very much. Uh, he didn't even score in the game, though, so we'll get into that again. Corey Brewer, as mentioned, Showing some serious improvement. I could see 10 points a game out of this guy. Uh, last year, mentioning that after watching Corey Brewer last year, you would have pretty much gagged. Like, you really think this guy's going to average 10 points a game? It's like, yeah, I do. I do. Al Jefferson is looking more and more like a franchise player, whereas uh, a, a year ago a lot of people questioned that. Is this guy really a franchise player, or is he just kind of a semi-franchise player? I think he has a chance to be that. I do. Kevin Love, a up-and-down preseason, uh, had a couple of really nice games, a couple of awful games. Uh, he had a 1-for-10 game in there, uh, but finished strongly in the preseason and had a nice preseason game. Mark Madsen is what he is. He's just going to probably play out his contract. He's the most. He's the world's biggest cheerleader. Uh, Rashad McCann's extremely talented, though at times out of control. Mike Miller, well, he's slashing more than shooting right now, and uh, yeah. Me and Forecaster, not too excited about about that. So we'll see what happens. Craig Smith, the Rhino, looks like he has taken a slight step up this year. That is good news indeed. So, uh, yeah, Randy Foy to me is a boring point guard that I'm not so sure this guy is going to become anything special. I'm really not sure at all. Last and not least, Ryan Gomes looking really 
solid as always, though. His ceiling, he's pretty much at his ceiling, I think. I think you're going to get what you're going to get from him, about 12 and 5. So uh, my take on the Timberwolves this year, significant improvement. Significant improvement, but still not playoff ready just yet. Uh, though I do potentially see that uh, when I look at the roster right here in front of me, I think a lot of these guys right here are going to be in the playoffs with the Timberwolves in this, the not-too-distant future. Um, some of them are going to be gone. There's going to be a few decisions made, but including Rashad McCants, who could be gone. There's a very good chance he will not return, as heard in reports. Uh, Rodney Carney, I hope the Wolves stick, keep keep him around. Corey Brewer, I think, almost certainly will be around because he does too many intangibles to get rid of, in, including he is now getting out on the break, as that's pretty much what I wanted out of Corey Brewer going into last season. He... Gets out on the break and does these athletic jams. Uh, I love the fast break, and I love that the Wolves are finally starting to use that more because Corey Brewer is the fastest player on this team, along with Sebastian Telfer. I like to see those two guys connect. Kevin Love's outlet passes as well will really help a guy like Corey Brewer who can fly, along with Rodney Carney. I am big fans of both of those guys. And um, with that, I'm going to take a quick break, and we're going to do the game review for the season opener. So we'll be right back after this announcement. Here on the sportstuff.com, we're toughing up on Brave the Wild with Paladino. Join me, Paladino, as we brave the Minnesota Wild Hockey Club on our way to the playoffs. We're available on the sportstuff.com and iTunes. The boogeyman Derek Bugard says you better listen or he just might drop the gloves. Call up your courage and brave the wild with your buddy, Paladino Joey. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion. The commercial you just heard, Brave the Wild. It is the Minnesota Wild podcast that I do, the third podcast podcast. So do check it out if you like hockey, you're a Minnesota Wild fan, do check it out. It is more than worth it. Available on thesportstuff.com and iTunes, just like this one and just like Purple Mafia. Alrighty then, the Minnesota Timberwolves played a game on the 29th of October, their only regular season game in October. But I'm telling you, it looks like these the season starts a little bit earlier every year, at least it, it seems that. Now, as mentioned, Randy Foy to me, I'm going to get uh, start off with him right away. Boring. Boring. He just didn't look. He, he, I don't know. Is this guy ever going to be a dynamic point guard? I don't know, man. I don't know. This is his third season. I understand he was hurt last year, but he is healthy. And when you want a statement out of somebody, um, so okay. So if Randy Foy is not going to drive the lane and sh- and uh, shoot very much, then where are the assists? He got three assists in this game, four turnovers. The only major positive was he did get three steals, and that led to points. That was nice. One of them including a fast break that finished with a Corey Brewer dunk, and I like that very much. But overall, I don't know. The other thing, uh, well, Randy Foy was 2 of 5 from three-point range. That's good. He missed the – Randy Foy missed both free throws starting out the game as well. I don't know about Randy Foy. I really, really don't. And I'm going to be questioning him all year. Until I start seeing something, because I'm not seeing it, folks. I'm not. Uh, Mike Miller only shot the ball seven times, and most of them were pretty much when he was slashing to the basket and trying to uh, lay it in. He missed some layups in this game. Uh, he uh, he only shot one three-pointer and missed it. Uh, for some strange reason, Mike Miller is slashing again, which is how he started with the Orlando Magic, as he read in the Star Tribune. And that's how he started out, was as a slasher. And then he changed it because he watched Reggie Miller shoot, and he's like, hey, I want to be just like Reggie Miller. So he started turning himself into a jump shooter, you know. He just keeps shooting the ball like 600 times a day, and he became the sharpshooter he is now. So why isn't he shooting the ball? That's another question. A major positive, though, for Mike Miller, he does have some serious playmaking skills, as he did get six assists in this game, leading the team in assists. Uh L. Jefferson, Hugh Mungus, 21 and 10, two blocks. This guy could have done a lot more than that. As uh, he didn't, uh, he shot the ball 17 times. Um, there were a lot of times he could have got the ball that he didn't. Only played 33 minutes in this game, so 
Yeah, his numbers could have been even higher. Very impressed, though, as it seemed like he scored with ease on his points. He was 9-17 of from the floor. Ryan Gomes, another solid game. Only one rebound, though, in 30 minutes. That's a little frustrating, but he did get 12 points on 6 of 8 shooting. Corey Brewer, as I said, looking like the guy that I wanted with the 7th overall pick in 2007. And no, he only got 8 points. I understand that. But (laughs) he got 3 steals. He got 4 assists and 7 rebounds. I mean, he filled the stats right there, man. And it's not about statistics, it's all those intangibles that he brings, including speed on the fast break, a finisher on the fast break, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. He does look a little bit bigger, but they say this guy's not going to get much bigger because that's just not how he's built. Rashad McCants, again, the gunner, as he pretty much every time touches the ball, it's over. The play's over. He's either going to score or he's going to miss. 18 field goal attempts. He made 7 of 18 shots, 1 of 3 from 3-point range. Again, yeah, this guy leading the team in shot attempts. That can get a little frustrating when you're the sixth man. Uh, 15 points in the game. I mean, he wasn't bad. He was a plus seven in this game, so I can't hate on him too much. Um, but I, I don't know, man. I don't know what to say. I, I just, I think he is what he is, and he's not going to change. You either take it or leave it with Rashad McCants. Kevin Love, what a nice start to his career. Uh, he looked like Tom Gugliotta. He helped Tom Gugliotta. Nice little inside pass to Al Jefferson. That was a nice play. I love watching that kind of stuff. Takes the ball, kind of turns to his side. Bloop! Al Jefferson jams it in. I mean, I love that kind of stuff. 12 points, 9 rebounds, 2 blocks for Kevin Love. I'm not convinced he's going to be a great defender, but at least he got blocks. So that's a start. Four personal fouls, though. That are going to be a problem probably starting out with his career. Uh, though his plus 20 was the best on the team. He really made this team better when he was in the game, and I was very, very pleased with his performance. Craig Smith, good, not great. Uh, Personal fouls, he got three personal fouls in only 14 and a half minutes, so that's that's still a problem with Craig Smith, and I think it always will be here and there. Um, Six and four, though, not a bad game overall. Rodney Carney, not much. Didn't really get to play too much, but he made the team better when he was in there, I thought, with nice defense, didn't score so, but he did get a steal and a block. That helps. Kevin Ollie, as I said, a nice, stable veteran. He got three assists, solid assists, just solid point guard play from Kevin Ollie. Only attempted one shot, didn't make it. So that, hey, that's okay. I, I don't want Kevin Ollie putting up six, seven shots in a game. Um, he did his job, and I like Kevin Ollie. He's the, he's a nice third string point guard. That's what he is. So that's pretty much the end of the game. Other than, uh, yeah, the Wolves had a nice lead. It was a very entertaining first quarter. The Wolves started to build a lead in the second, but then Sacramento takes over in the third. But the Wolves able to hang on in the fourth by just by this much, as the Kings had two shot attempts to tie the game, including one of them was actually to win. It was a three-point shot, but no putback from Kevin Smith's miss. John Selmans could not finish. Selmans had 24 points in this game, five rebounds and eight assists. Nice game from John Selmans, indeed. Uh... Yeah, Kevin Martin shut down nicely by Corey Brewer, only 5 of 19, including 3 of 11 from three-point range. He had a Rashad McCants type of line there, other than the six rebounds and five assists, which McCants will never do. Um, not bad. But, uh, yeah, Kevin Martin, when he makes his shots, it's unbelievable. I mean, that ball is so, it's shot perfectly. I mean, it is some beautiful stuff. Uh, Thompson, though, the rookie, Jason Thompson, whoo! 18 points and 10 rebounds, 12th pick by the Sacramento Kings out of Ryder. Uh, this guy looks really good, man. So he has a chance to be something nice for this Kings team. That was only in 22 minutes, 12, 18 points and 10 rebounds. Huge, including a block. So mm-hmm. Golden State has something to look forward to in the not-too-distant future. So good luck with that. Other than that, that's pretty much it. It is a Nice win for the Timberwolves, a game, as Al Jefferson said, they would have lost last year. Um, one other thing real quick, Spencer Haas, sheesh, this guy has really emerged from a weak rookie season. 12 points, 14 rebounds. He got six blocks in this game. He was a menace for the Timberwolves inside the whole game. I mean, I'm impressed with Spencer Haas. And um, the Wolves saw something in him last year. There was some steam that they just might take him instead of Corey Brewer with the seventh pick. Hmm, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, yeah, that 
That's starting to look like a nice idea there. Spencer Hawes, of course, filling in for Brad Miller, who was suspended five games for marijuana. Good job, Brad. So that's pretty much your game review and the, the week for the Timberwolves. That'll be so real quick. We're going to get into the poll, the poll results, uh, the previous show, Episode 7, who wins the Pacific Division and why. LA Lakers getting 75% of the votes. Phoenix getting 12 and a half percent, along with the LA Clippers. The Golden State Warriors and Sacramento Kings get no votes. Understandable there. The Clippers, though, yeah, they get 12 and a half percent. How about that? My take was LA is too good, and that's just all there is to it. Phoenix not ready to win it. Uh, Brian Cush, his response is, I think the Lakers run away with it. I think they will get the 70 win talk for a while, too, but we'll probably end up with 66, 67, like the C's last year. Good take, Brian Cush. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the Lakers probably will have the best record in the league this year, despite the fact I do think the Boston Celtics repeat as the NBA champions. So there it is. Paladino Joey on Tim Rolf's Explosion is picking the Boston Celtics to go 2-2. Two and two. Yep, to win it again. Puppet Master, there we go, host of Motown Madness. Of course, Brian Cush, host of Running with the Bulls. I love his logo, Los Angeles Losers. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I really think Phoenix will win the division, or they, they will. The Lakers are good, but I think Shaq will really mesh well this year, finally. And guess what? Puppet Master is right, because Shaq had a really nice opening game with about 14 points, 12 rebounds, and some blocks. Nice job, Shaq. And nice pick, Puppet Master. I got you there. Uh, Dave Vang, dang, I'd love to say Phoenix, but I'll take the Lakers to win the division. I'm I, I'm with you, Dave. I am Puppet Master. Some kind of Suns fan you are. That's funny. Red Stan, welcome back again. Moderator San Antonio Spurs. I don't know how you can't go with L.A. They had the best record last season without Bynum for 45 games, and Powell only came in for half the season. Suns will be up there, but L.A. win will, will, will win the West if all goes to plan. Agreed, number one. Agreed. Yes, I agree 100%. L.A., is going to win the division and the West. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, as I mentioned before, I think the veteran Celtics win again. Shh. Don't tell anyone. Uh, Q Dizzle. Lakers will win it easily, and I think they'll win it by 15 games. He might be right. He might be right. I mean, it's possible. Um, yeah. Phoenix, I think, is the top candidate for that. But, yeah, they, yeah, if, if LA wins 67 games, I mean, who, who knows? Clippers UK, Clippers UK, I hope he doesn't mean Clippers suck, <laughs> no, he means Clippers UK, um, yep, hurts to say it as a Clips fan, but I don't think it's in doubt the Lakers win it, just by how many, agreed, yep, I mean, it could be a 15 games, it could be 10, who knows, maybe they'll win by one, maybe Phoenix explodes this year, uh, now I'll continue, the Lakers team is just too strong, now, and Kobe shouldn't have to play as many minutes, although being the selfish git he is, he will want to hold the ball for all 48 minutes <laughs> as they have scoring threats from everywhere. Bynum and Gasol inside, Kobe from everywhere, Sasha and Odom when they turn up and a solid bench. By, by the way, Odom is coming off the bench this year. Radmanovic is starting. Interesting decision by head coach Phil Jackson. Hopefully the Clips can place third behind the Suns, and I think they will, Clippers UK. And by the way, welcome aboard. It's the first time I heard from you here on Timberwolves Explosion boards. Uh, you may have posted on here before, but I don't remember. Uh, great to hear from you. Thank you. Um, that's the end of the post. So good post, folks. I'm really happy to see the involvement. It's really good. Uh, Timberwolves Explosion having the most replies out of all my podcasts here on the sportsstuff.com and I, I appreciate it very much. Thank you, guys. Now, real quick, who wins the Northwest Division and, and why is the newest poll. So this is the last poll where I'll be asking who wins the division. Utah, Denver, Portland, Minnesota, Oklahoma City. And please don't pick the Wolves or the Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm just putting them there because, you know, they're part of the division. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I went with Utah, as mentioned. My little comment is, gotta go with Utah. You really can't see any reason why I wouldn't right now. Portland doesn't look ready to make that huge step yet. Denver, 
is a mixture of immature and selfish players that won't ever accomplish anything major. And, of course, the Wolves and ahem, Thunder are too raw to compete. Make your votes and be sure to post your comments slash reasons. Thank you for listening to the show as always, Paladino Live Productions. As yes, this is a Paladino Live production, along with TSS, of course, and iTunes. I do thank each and every one of you for listening, as now we are going to call it a show, as this will probably be the last 45-minute show for a while. <laughs> I apologize they've been so long, but hey, they're division previews. There's a lot of info to cover. So again, thank you, each and every one of you, for listening. It's always a pleasure, and I want to wish you a great week, as we'll be back next week for episode number eight, where we'll talk straight-up Timberwolves basketball and some NBA news. Until then, take care.